Hi. So in this tutorial, we want to cover the correct way that we form our hands to execute a Wing Chun punch. So traditional martial arts, most systems, they teach you to make a very tight fist and they land with the first two knuckles in sort of a position like this. Most systems have that. Um, in Wing Chun, about 98% of the punches, at least the system that we do, 98% uh, of the punches are standing punches or what is considered a hammer fist, pushing hammer fist. Now, first of all, in forming the fist, what we do is you want to go just up to the index finger when you're folding the thumb in. You don't want it going too far past. The reason for that is because it suppresses a nerve in your wrist that makes the, the entire structure a lot more stable. So when you're throwing your punch, you want this, you don't want to over tighten. So that's the first thing. Now, the landing position that you want to, when the point of impact, you have a choice. Traditional Wing Chun lands on the last three, last three knuckles. Um, traditionally, it's called the Sun character punch when you hit the last three. So in order to do that, the fist is going to be slightly tilted to make impact. And then upon impact, when the hand straightens out, the rest of it evens out itself. This has a sort of a shoving effect on whatever it is you hit. Now, I have found benefit also when you land on your first two knuckles. The effect that it has is more of a penetration shot so that the force travels into the object and it has a different effect all around. So, upon impact with the first two knuckles, penetration, the last three knuckles, you do get penetration, but you also have a shoving effect on whatever it is you're hitting. All right. Um, last quick thing about that is the proximity of the elbow to the torso and the center line. So when I start here, when everybody starts learning Wing Chun punches, you start with the hand in the center. So, so it like this, and then you travel out with it. That's the general way of doing it. What you want to focus on, really, um, is having the elbow close to the torso. And as the punch is traveling out, your elbow now comes to the center, and it lines up with your center line to execute the punch. A lot of people put too much focus on the front end with the fist. And the concept of Wing Chun being center line structure is having the elbow connect to the shoulder and then connect to the rest of the body. In order to do that, um, one of my students had taught me to visualize that you are only punching from the elbow. So if you sort of blank off the rest of this and you imagine that you're going to truly punch with the elbow, then you automatically have the alignments correct to throw the punch. A, front, a punch has to have structure behind it and it's not just impact only. At least that's how it is in the Wing Chun system. So, this would be dummy. If I throw punch, so I want to make sure my thumb is on the index finger and it's not passed, I will decide where my impact is going to be. So for this punch, I'm going to allow the last three knuckles, the some character punch. I'm going to make sure the elbow comes in and I'm going to visualize that I want to punch with the elbow driving the punch. Okay. All right. I also don't want to lock the elbow when I throw this punch because obviously this is going to damage my elbow. You want a soft bend in the elbow. All right. And upon you can see the impact really is the last three knuckles. And as my elbow straightens out, it causes a shoving effect on the target. It's almost like a backward jump. So here, I push. All right, I will set the other hand, all right, and then draw this hand back. So I, I'm not leaving it and scraping it down. This is another bad habit some systems actually have. You want to, you want to come off of the target and then draw back so that this hand now runs along the line of the first hand and then meets the impact. The other hand will just act impact, the other hand is going to come back onto the center. This is now the basis for moving into the chain punch. So real quick, 
a lot of people who see any videos uh, and movies, a very rapid fire punch that looks very cool, but when people try to copy that in actual training, doing the punch that way doesn't have any sort of effect. Yeah, you might beat up on the surface, but there's nothing going into the object or the person that you're trying to hit. So the way to think about it is, if we are doing single punches with all of the structure in place, you ideally want to have the same structure with all of your punches. So when you do a chain punch, let's say if I do a, a series of three shots on the chain punch, I want each one to be pushing the target back. And then if the target is going back, by the time I make contact with the other hand, it's going to continue going back. So that's the general concept of it. Um, a Sifu had once said, if you hit three to six chain punches on somebody and they're still standing there, then you should, you should run because we're literally after the first and the second one, the person should be going back. That's the, the, the ideal that you want when you are executing your winged punches. So I hope this has been informative, right? And um, we're gonna continue on with the series, but this is always a good basic to practice. So you want to, key points to remember is thumb at the index finger, form the center line, bring the elbow close to the rib cage, and then as it travels out, let the elbow take over the middle, and then drive the last force from the elbow to execute the punch. All right, and we'll see you on the next one, take it.